Welcome to our multi-part video series exploring the roles and representations of feminist frequency. This project will examine the tropes, plot devices, and patterns most commonly associated with I'm Anita Sarkeesian from a systemic big picture perspective. Endlessly amused at detractors insisting I've insulted gamers when I very intentionally critique the games and not the players. You were receiving harassment before your Kickstarter. Um, how do I deal with trolls? Uh, it's an ongoing process. You said 4chan already found you. And the more popular I get, the more I get. Like, 4chan has found me, and they're atrocious. Uh, and they purposely come, like, they subscribe to my videos so that they know when one comes out so that they can attack me. This is what kind of harassment you received. And I get, like, the most horrendous comments you can imagine. Every Everything from, like, you know, you're hot, you're ugly, I want to do these explicit things to your body, to, like, actual threats of, of sexual violence and threats of um, death, even. What you received before your Kickstarter is what you receive now. Then you said this at your TEDx talk after your Kickstarter. There are a bunch of male gamers out there, and while I was attacked by some teenage boys, I was also attacked by thousands of grown men. And this isn't entirely surprising considering the average age of the male gamer in the U.S. is about 30. It's not just boys being boys. It's not just how the internet works. You blamed male gamers. Even though you acknowledged harassment, you were already receiving. You said this about Gamergate on October 13th last year. Let's be real for a second. Gamergate is the new name for a group that has been harassing me for two years. All the same users are involved. I am not going to get into the debate of what Gamergate is actually about, but you are acknowledging you had harassment before Gamergate, just like you had harassment before your Kickstarter. You know, you're hot, you're ugly, I want to do these explicit things to your body, to like actual threats of, of sexual violence and threats of um, death even. You bring your harassment and trolls with you wherever you go but you decided to start blaming gamers. There are a bunch of male gamers out there. Then you said this on January 21st of this year. Death and rape threats should never be considered normal in gaming or anywhere else. It's time for a paradigm shift. You were receiving these threats before your Kickstarter, and you said this is how you deal with it. Um, how do I deal with trolls? I, I moderate all of my comments. I have people that support me and that I can like vent to I'm kind of used to it at this point which is sad and like it doesn't no way means that it's acceptable but um I just sort of ignore them as they come through I, I block people left and right anytime they leave any sort of like explicitly anti-feminist or harassing or threatening comments they're blocked YouTube has implemented a report harassment Facebook has implemented a report harassment so I I urge everyone to moderate comments or turn them off you know just don't if it's too much just don't have them why did it change from ignore it? I just sort of ignore them as they come through. I just sort of ignore them as they come through. I just sort of ignore them as they come through. To talking about it all the time. You received $158,000 to talk about games, not harassment. Yet most of your public appearances and interviews focus on your harassment. You do mention your tropes videos, but a lot of time is spent talking about harassment. January 23rd. Here is what my life on Twitter has become since I started critiquing games. There are dozens like this from this week. Your life was like this before your Kickstarter, and you yourself said that the bigger you become, the more harassment you receive. Um, how do I deal with trolls? Uh, it's an ongoing process. Um, and the more popular I get, the more I get. Like 4chan has found me. Yet you are citing tweets that don't mention games or gamers and telling us this is what your life is like since you started critiquing games, even though you were already receiving this harassment. This massive update, after three years of lazy research with a $158,000 Kickstarter, is disingenuous to the people who supported you. But why is this, Anita? Why did you spend a great deal of the last three years you were supposed to be spending on your videos boo-hooing about your harassment you said you were already used to before your Kickstarter? I'm, I'm kind of used to it at this point, which is sad, and like it doesn't no way means that it's acceptable, but um, I just sort of ignore them as they come through. 
Why would you spend so much of your free time talking about your harassment instead of doing your video series you were paid to do? Um, so, one, so one of the ways that I deal with this, um, one, I'm going to do a research study about harassment that women face on YouTube as a way to funnel my anger and frustration at this. You said you wanted to do a research study about harassment before your Kickstarter. One, I'm going to do a research study about harassment that women face on YouTube as a way to funnel my anger and frustration at this. You've spent a great deal of time talking about your harassment instead of producing your videos. And instead of owning up to your laziness, you choose to blame gamers and harassment that you could simply ignore. I'm kind of used to it at this point. I just sort of ignore them as they come through. In part two, we looked at the contradictions in Anita's statements. In this video I'll do a deeper examination of why she lied about her Kickstarter harassment. When Anita started talking about her Kickstarter harassment she was adamant that it be defined as a cyber mob. There's a, miscon there's a sort of conception that what happened to me was trolling. Um, and trolling is largely thought of as one individual who's trying to get a rise out of another individual. And what happened to me is really a cyber mob, right? It was thousands of individuals coming after me who were loosely working together. Um, so that's not just trying to, you know, get a rise out of someone. That's a very, you know, strategic attempt to silence and discredit um, an individual. The exact criteria she defines as a cyber mob already existed before Kickstarter. There's a, miscon there's a sort of conception that what happened to me was trolling. Um, and trolling is largely thought of as one individual who's trying to get a rise out of another individual. And what happened to me is really a cyber mob, right? It was thousands of individuals coming after me who were loosely working together. And the more popular I get, the more I get. Like 4chan has found me and they're atrocious. Uh, and they purposely come, like they subscribe to my videos so that they know when one comes out so that they can attack me. Um, so that's not just trying to, you know, get a rise out of someone. That's a very, you know, strategic attempt to silence and discredit um, an individual. Anita got mad at the CNN interviewer because she wouldn't define her Kickstarter harassment as a cyber mob. I recently spoke with CNN International about online harassment. The interviewer was terrible and they predictably tried to frame me as a victim of trolls. Anyway, I did my best to try to redirect the conversation to a more systemic understanding of the problem. Anita never acknowledges that there was a cyber mob that existed before Kickstarter. Not only does Anita never acknowledge the existence of a cyber mob before Kickstarter, she lies and pretends no cyber mob ever existed before Kickstarter. I've received some sporadic harassment for my past critiques of movies or TV shows, but the sheer ferocity, intensity, and coordination of this wave of abuse and threats is on a scale I've never personally experienced before. Let's see what the definition of sporadic is. Sporadic? occurring at irregular intervals or only in a few places. Yeah, like 4chan has found me. Like they subscribe to my videos so that they can attack me. To like actual threats of, of sexual violence and threats of um, death even. Anita says she's being harassed for no other reason than that she wants to examine a world, the gaming world. How do I deal with trolls? And the more popular I get, the more I get. Like 4chan has found me. Like they subscribe to my videos so that they can attack me. To like actual threats of, of sexual violence and threats of um, death even. So with that in mind, I decided to launch a fundraising campaign on the crowdfunding website Kickstarter, where I would create a series of videos to look specifically at the way women are represented in video games. Now, I'm a pop culture critic. I am a feminist and I'm a woman. And I'm all of these things openly on the internet. So I'm no stranger to some level of sexist backlash. I'm very, I've sadly gotten used to sexist slurs and sexist insults, usually involving kitchens and sandwiches. But what happened this time was a little bit different. I found myself the target of a massive online hate campaign. Yet, like 4chan has found me. Like they subscribe to my videos so that they can attack me. To like actual threats of, of sexual violence and threats of um, death even. So I announced uh, my intentions to create a video series examining the way women are portrayed in video games. And I was attacked by a section of male gamers. Yet, like 4chan has found me. And I think part of uh, the attack was was based on their attempt to preserve the status quo of gaming as a male-dominated space. 
And the more popular I get, the more I get, like 4chan has found me. Part of uh, the attack was, was based on their attempt to preserve the status quo of gaming as a male-dominated space, and all of the privileges and entitlements that come with an unquestioned boys club. Tell us a little bit more about the kind of threats and attacks you received. Sure. Um, so all of my social media sites were flooded with uh, sexist and racist slurs and pornography. The second biggest challenge is harassment. I get near daily comments telling me I'm either ugly or hot and the explicit things they would like to do to my body all the way down to threats of physical and sexual violence. Threats uh, to my life, threats of uh, rape and sexual violence. To like actual threats of, of sexual violence and threats of um, death even. She launched a Kickstarter project to fund her tropes versus women in video games web series, with a modest goal of $6,000. The target was met in 24 hours, and within two weeks she had raised nearly four times that much. That's when the harassment started, people vandalized her Wikipedia page with gender-based slurs, and her YouTube videos were hit with a barrage of abuse. Sarkeesian had been harassed online before, I'm a woman on the internet. She says, but she had never been attacked by a mob. Yet, like 4chan has found me. Like they subscribe to my videos so that they can attack me. To like actual threats of, of sexual violence and threats of um, death even. But in all seriousness, you're, you're accumulating the evidence of sexism and, and extreme sexism in these video games. The reaction online could not have been something you expected. It was extraordinary. Can you describe it? Yeah, like 4chan has found me. I decided to do the series Tropes vs. Women in Video Games. We launched a very modest Kickstarter to help fund the series. I was asking for $6,000 for five videos. Um, and when I announced the series uh, to my fan base, I was descended upon by a cyber mob. Um, it was an, an, It was a organized, concerted effort to destroy me. Everything from death threats and rape threats, misogynist slurs, this is across all of my social media, my email, my website. Yet, like 4chan has found me. Like they subscribe to my videos so that they can attack me. To like actual threats of, of sexual violence and threats of um, death even. I have been harassed every day for over four years with no end in sight. Um, in 2012, I launched a, I announced that I was going to create a series of videos that would look at the way women were represented in video games. Before I ever released a single episode, I was bombarded with a enormous hate campaign. This took many forms. Uh, one was racist and misogynist slurs across all my social media accounts. Yeah, like 4chan has found me. Like they subscribe to my videos so that they can attack me. To like actual threats of, of sexual violence and threats of um, death even. Tell me, who, who, who was the one behind your abuse? Behind the, who? who? Was it the video game people? Was it a government? Was it a group of people? Who was it? It was thousands of men on the internet. Um, mm -hmm. Oftentimes they mobilize around certain uh, online message boards. Mm -hmm. So 4chan, Reddit, 8chan. Yeah, like 4chan has found me. Mm -hmm. um, where they kind of, they come together and they find targets and they go after them. So it is very loosely organized. Like they subscribe to my videos. It's a loosely coordinated effort by thousands of men uh, and boys online to attack women. And so you may have heard of Gamergate, which what m my harassment campaign in 2012 was the predecessor to what is now referred to as Gamergate, which is the same group of men that just go after um, women in the games industry. And the more popular I get, the more I get, like 4chan has found me. Anita left the comment section open on her Kickstarter video knowing full will that there was a organized cyber mob of 4chan trolls harassing her. So tell us what happened when you announced on YouTube that you were going to launch this project. <laughs> well, um, I put the video up and um, I, I intentionally moderate all of my comments and all of my feminist frequency spaces. And this time I thought maybe I would just let them go and see what happens. Um, yeah, like 4chan has found me. Like they subscribe to my videos so that they can attack me. To like actual threats of, of sexual violence and threats of um, death even. So why did Anita leave the comment section on her Kickstarter video open? Using the Wayback Machine Anita gives us an answer in the description on her Kickstarter video. I've left the comments open on this video as a way of showing why this topic is so important. 
I apologize in advance for the hate speech and ignorance that will inevitably be left below. So don't feed the trolls, except maybe to thank them for proving to everyone that sexism in gaming is indeed a huge problem. So Anita wanted to prove that sexism in the games industry is a huge problem but I thought her project was about the representation of women in video games. Why is Anita apologizing in advance for harassing comments if she supposedly didn't know anything about a cyber mob attacking her? It's almost as if she knew a cyber mob was going to attack her and what happened to Anita moderating her comments so her audience wouldn't have to see the harassment. Yeah, like 4chan has found me. Why didn't Anita moderate her comments like she did before Kickstarter? The second biggest challenge is harassment. I get near daily comments telling me I'm either ugly or hot and the explicit things they would like to do to my body all the way down to threats of physical and sexual violence. In my small online spaces, I combat this by moderating all the comments that come through my YouTube channel and my website. Even though I read them all, I don't approve hateful and or combative comments so that people who find my work can see and participate in genuine and thoughtful engagement in moderated and somewhat safer spaces, which are in rare supply on the internet. Yeah, like 4chan has found me. Like they subscribe to my videos so that they can attack me. To like actual threats of... of sexual violence and threats of um, death even. One, so one of the ways that I deal with this, on a day-to-day -day basis, I'm, I moderate all of my comments. So when you comment on my, when he, any of my worlds online, um, I have to read it before it gets approved. So I don't approve any of those um, so that the people coming to my page don't have to deal with it. Why didn't Anita follow the advice she gave to this audience? So I, I urge everyone to moderate comments. Um, or turn them off you know just don't if it's too much just don't have them and and allow comments only on like certain private spaces that you create anita could have easily followed her own advice and moderated or disabled her comments on her kickstarter video instead she left her comments open knowing full well what would happen as a result of that decision so tell us what happened when you announced on youtube that you were going to launch this project <laughs> well um I put the video up and um, I, I intentionally moderate all of my comments and all of my feminist frequency spaces. And this time I thought maybe I would just let them go and see what happens. Um, During her Kickstarter, Anita purposefully left her comment section open because she knew she would be harassed by the 4chan cyber mob that was harassing her before Kickstarter. She wanted not only her audience to see the harassment but the world to see it as well. On the day Anita uploaded her Kickstarter video to YouTube she said this on Twitter. Good morning misogyny. Good morning hate speech. Good morning threats. Good morning sexist trolls. Does this sound like the comment of someone who was surprised and afraid by the response she received on her Kickstarter YouTube video? It almost sounds like she's happy 4chan attacked her. Two days after uploading her YouTube Kickstarter video, Anita writes an article on her website saying that all of the harassing comments on her YouTube video was a reaction to her Kickstarter video. Here is a very small sample of the harassment I deal with for daring to criticize sexism in video games. Keep in mind that all this is in response to my Kickstarter project. And the more popular I get, the more I get. Like 4chan has found me. For a video series called T-Ropes vs. Women in Video Games, which I have not even made yet. These are the types of silencing tactics often used against women on the internet who dare to speak up. These messages and comments have included everything from the typical sandwich and kitchen jokes to threats of violence, death, sexual assault and rape. Like they subscribe to my videos so that they can attack me. To like actual threats of... of sexual violence and threats of um, death even. We know for a fact that Anita is lying in this article and been lying every since. This Kickstarter lie Anita told works on several different levels. Anita knew that she could get a lot more publicity for the project and raise a lot more money by lying and saying a cyber mob of gamers harassed her as opposed to a 4chan cyber mob that has been harassing her before Kickstarter. 
It also worked as a shield against legitimate criticism because Anita could simply brush off any criticism as harassment as well as have other people both in the media and elsewhere defend her no matter what criticism was leveled at her. Recently she set up a Kickstarter page for a new project looking at the representation of women in video games. And after the Kickstarter page went up, a whole bunch of gamer dudes decided, even though they haven't heard what her opinion is yet, that the mere idea of this woman presuming to form an opinion about them at some point in the future was so frightening that they had to organize a scorched earth campaign of harassment and bullying against her. And Anita has handled the whole situation incredibly well and her project has wound up getting more support and funding than ever. So in this instance the private army of sexist dudes has only succeeded in proving her right and making her stronger. If you want to debate Anita Sarkeesian's debates of video game culture there's plenty of times for that. Like for example after she makes the critiques. But none of that stuff is the issue right now. Now, the issue right now is the bullying and abuse and harassment that she's facing. And you should recognize that that harassment is wrong and that's what matters right now regardless of your political position on misandry and men's rights and blah 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 blah. That when you bully and harass a woman for speaking her mind, all you do is show us that you're afraid of that woman's voice and you don't think you can beat her intellectually without using a cheat code. The sad thing is, there are interesting discussions we could be having from this. Hell, as far as Anita goes, there are some solid criticisms you can level at her work. I'm not 100% on her side, you know. She's not perfect by a long shot, and her video series seems already to be a little off base with some of the examples she's named as targets. But we can't talk about that anymore, because the debate's not about whether she's right or wrong. The debate was invalidated when people decided to try and ruin her life en masse. The chance to debate her on merit was lost once people started threatening to rape her. Now it's hard to debate her points without people thinking you hate her because she's a woman, and that's a direct result of her being hated by so many for being a woman. A few people are now trying to retroactively justify the assault on her by accusing her of scamming and exploitation, but it's too late for that. If you'd have just let her make her fucking video in peace and rein in your knee-jerk viciousness, you might have been able to debate her on an intellectual playing field. Hell, if her videos do turn out to be incorrect, you could have just let her hang by her own batard, or you could have simply ignored the videos and realised nothing of value was lost. But instead, you attacked her on the sheer mention of her intentions, turned the entire debate into a thesis on how misogynistic gamers are, and demolished any chance you had of having a rational, sensible debate with Anita and truly testing the courage of her convictions, which is something I would have liked to have seen. And this keeps happening. This is what happens whenever someone has a problem with a woman working in video games. She gets attacked based on the fact that she is a woman, and then the debate shifts into sexism. And it's your fault the ones who apparently hate this debate. You're the ones turning it into a gender war because you have to go for the jugular every single time and make things personal and vicious. And when it starts, you can't stop. And thus you continue to fix the spotlight on the issue and provide fame and exposure to the person you wish would go away. Anita doesn't even have her first video out, but because of the folks who wanted her to go away, she's got more publicity for her debut than she could have dreamed of. And you can blame the press for being complicit in this, but what are the press mostly reporting on? Her attacks! Attacks they wouldn't be able to report on if they'd have just stopped. Anita Sarkeesian is your Frankenstein's monster. You created her, and now you can't stop her. Last year, Canadian vlogger and critic Anita Sarkeesian started a Kickstarter project for her YouTube channel, Feminist Frequency. Her thesis was simple. Video games often relied on sexist tropes for their female characters, such as the damsel in distress. Okay, sure. Maybe it's true, maybe it's not. But, you know, freedom of speech and all that. And yet, what was the response? Every aspect of her social life was consumed by just the worst harassment. People emailed her photos of video game characters sexually assaulting her. Reddit threads were created accusing her of things like wasting Kickstarter money. Someone even created a game where you could beat her up. Maybe it's just me, but it seems like a bit of an overreaction, right? She was making YouTube videos, not committing war crimes. But clearly Anita and Carolyn struck a vein, and the bleeding would not stop. And amidst all the controversy, we're left with a single question. Why did this happen in the first place? It's called outgroup derogation, and it means that you perceive those outside your group as a threat. And that's exactly what Carolyn and Anita are, a threat. Why? Because they're women, and to a certain virulent portion of the gaming population, women are never real gamers. They are 
always outside interlopers, and they need to be shut down. Before Feminist Frequency, when we talked about sexism in games or in the gaming community, it was difficult to collectively identify who was being harmed. But when Anita Sarkeesian publishes a laundry list of horrible things sent to her on Twitter, suddenly we understand what the problem is and who is actually suffering. That's why the New York Times, New Statesman, and Ted all took notice when Sarkeesian became a target. The issue of sexism in games finally had someone, not an avatar, as its spokesperson. Person. And that's what all great social movements need, attention from the outside world and a voice to help them humanize the problem. And Anita Sarkeesian has seen her life turn upside down, truly, since starting a video web series called Feminist Frequency. That was almost six years ago now, must feel like a lifetime ago to her, critiquing the depiction of females in pop culture and gaming culture, and it has catapulted her into the headlines and into some outright hatreds. And certainly she can say she has changed the agenda. As Rolling Stone magazine put it last year, the backlash she has suffered has only made her point for her. Gaming has a problem. Let's go back and see what Anita's financial situation was like before Kickstarter. The two biggest challenges I face are funding and harassment. I don't receive funding to make feminist frequency videos and while I want to create videos more often they are extremely time consuming to research and produce and I still have to pay rent each month so balancing paid work and feminist frequency has been a challenge. When Tropes vs Women ended, Anita wanted to do a new show, the same format, but specifically for female representations in video games. She'd always been interested in games and saw an opportunity to contribute a strong feminist analysis, something that had, up to that point, been sorely lacking. The only problem was that she was running out of money. She was self-funding the videos in between other jobs and making them in her living room. She didn't want to put ads on the videos and the donation button on the Feminist Frequency website had so far failed to yield anything significant. Well the money she raised because of her Kickstarter lies and all of the donations that came after certainly helped with her money issues. Anita used lies to claim that there was a deep-seated problem in the gaming community and that's why her Kickstarter received the level of harassment it did. So I announced uh, my intentions to create a video series examining the way women are portrayed in video games. And I was attacked by a section of male gamers. And I think part of uh, the attack was, was based on their attempt to preserve the status quo of gaming as a male-dominated space and all of the privileges and entitlements that come with an unquestioned boys club. And with the gaming community, it's worse? It seems to be that way. Um, the gaming community is a little bit different than some of the other fandoms in terms of it's still considered to be very male dominated, um, both by people outside of gaming and by the men in gaming, which is hilarious because uh, statistics have come out to show that uh, between 40 and 40 percent of gamers above the age of 18 are actually women. So there's this idea that gaming is made for men. It's like the male's last personal space that's their own where they're free to be as misogynist and racist as they want to be, as if that's OK. Um, and so there's a special, I think, attack that comes from certain parts of um, the male gaming community when they feel like their games are being threatened. Like the the joke is that they literally think I'm going to take their games away as if uh, that's even a part of this conversation at all. I, I'm a gamer and I enjoy games. There's obviously a critical mass of this kind of hateful gamer. But do, do you think I mean, what proportion of gamers do you think they are? They represent? I, I think it's. A significant portion. Um, you know, there's a culture in gaming that promotes this kind of behavior. I mean, even the intro that you just played was kind of horrifying to me. Uh, to yeah, listen it, to, it was actually, though. yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I, I this is what I research and what I'm doing. And I was sitting here a little bit like mortified. Um, so there's there's this culture that's promoted in games that I think is is helping to make the attack on me almost acceptable in a really sort of strange way. Anita says she's being harassed for no other reason than that she wants to examine a world, the gaming world. It's very male dominated. And I think with that male domination comes a sense of entitlement, mm -hmm. that these games are for men by men, and that women, if they're going to participate, they need to shut up. Anita calls her attackers a cyber mob, 
deliberately trying to silence her. Now, video games are kind of a big deal these days. Um, gaming is a multi-billion dollar industry with an enormous impact on our larger cultural landscape. What you may not know is that gaming and gaming communities are currently undergoing a massive paradigm shift. The cultural, political, and economic structures of the medium are in the process of fundamentally transforming. While women have always played and made games, for several decades the industry catered almost exclusively to a straight, white, male demographic. This is no longer the case. The new reality is that gaming is becoming a more diverse and inclusive environment for everyone. That metamorphosis is happening slowly and sometimes painfully, but it's happening. This is great news. Uh, however, I'm here today to share a little bit about the phenomenon of very vocal, aggressive, mostly male gamers who are unwilling or unable to accept this new reality. Their reactionary response can only be described as a massive and terrifying assault directed at the female fans, developers, and critics who feel they are destroying games. So for the last two years, they have viciously and aggressively come after me by any means necessary. Yeah, well, since I... Uh, announced that I was going to be doing a video series specifically looking at the representations of women in video games, I have been attacked and ultimately terrorized for two years because of this series. So everything from, you know, my social media accounts flooded with misogynist and racist slurs to trying to hack into my, you know, my social media and email. And and people can go online if they want to get a sense of this, because the, the, these threats are, are really, I mean, they're, they're vile, they're specific, they're the things that we, we couldn't read them on the radio, couldn't even come close. <laughs> yes. Oftentimes there are very specific rape threats, <laughs> which are highly illustrative, um, that are also connected to, like, my home address or, you know, uh, like, attacks on my parents and um, my colleagues and their families as well. And, you know, I am not the only woman being attacked right now in games. There have been a number of other women who are fearing for their lives and leaving their homes because they're receiving threats as well. So this is actually a larger problem within the gaming community right now. So what is it with the gaming community that, that you know, gets to this level of nastiness and, and misogyny on, online? Yeah, I, I get asked that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm sure. Um, and it's a really good question that I think is, is pretty complicated. But, you know, one of the things is that in some ways, you know, there are some men who have gravitated towards gaming culture because they've been rejected by sort of this larger alpha male culture. But the problem with that is that gaming allows them to sort of fulfill that role of the alpha male role, right? The the macho testosterone kind of posturing that you get in a lot of these sort of big AAA games. Mm -hmm. And so they're actually kind of re-perpetuating that alpha male culture by attacking people that they perceive to be weaker than them. Um, so they're going after women, they're going after queer folks, they're going after trans folks, and especially anyone who speaks up um, and is critical in any way, you know, about gaming. Can, can you give us a little bit of, of your, the, the critique, as you've made it, of, of video games? Often women are framed as helpless, or their prizes to be won, or their highly sexualized um, sort of male fantasies. The other piece of this, too, is that there's an enormous amount of violence against women that's used in these games, oftentimes just as sort of set dressing, just like in the background, these women are hurt or beaten up um, just to make the world seem more gritty. These representations are really harmful to women. Um, and so, you know, we're asking for better representations and better stories, um, having more female protagonists that are like full and complete characters. So this is um, appalling and also maybe difficult for folks who aren't part of the gaming industry to completely understand. So help us to understand, I mean, you know, we watch your feminist frequency and you're very sort of measured, you're clear that you love parts of the game, that you're part of it, but also that you have a critique. How in the world does that end up with death threats and bomb, bomb scares? It, it is really hard for people outside of the industry to understand this. And I think even for a lot of people in the industry to understand that this is what it's come to. Um, you know, one of, one of the th reasons why I think this is happening is um, in the last few years, there's been a very strong push towards in making gaming a more inclusive space, uh, making games more inclusive, making the industry more inclusive. And there's more and more voices speaking up uh, to sort of to demand this change. And I think that there is a section of male or mostly male gamers who are fighting against that, who are 
are trying to preserve the status quo of gaming as a male-dominated space. And their reaction is often in these ways that you were just describing, violent um, threats of violence, uh, attacking our character, trying to discredit us, uh, you know, threats to, sorry, yeah. misogynist and sexist slurs, all of those sorts of things. We have this larger culture in gaming um, where a subset of mo mostly male gamers have been viciously going after women and attacking them. Um, it's mostly women who speak up, ab <clears throat> excuse me, who speak up against, um, you know, actually speak up for the inclusivity of games, right? Speak up in terms of creating more diversity in games. Um, and there, right now, this reference of Gamergate is sort of this big culmination of these, these toxic harassment, uh, this toxic harassment campaign that's been happening to me for years and to many other women. Um, and so they're, they're sort of lashing out and, and going after women in these horrible, vicious ways, um, sort of as, as um, trying to preserve gaming as, as you know, a male-dominated space, as the status quo. Um, but they're doing it under the guise of uh, journalist, journalism ethics. Um, but really, what's happening is they are attacking women. To the thousands of men who turned their misogyny into a game, a game in which gendered slurs, death, and rape threats are weapons used to try and take down the big bad villain, which in this case is me. My life is not a game. I've been harassed and threatened every day for going on three years with no end in sight, and all because I dared to question the self-evident, obvious sexism running rampant in the games industry. Um, and I think part of the reason that they did that was because there's this sense of entitlement that some male gamers have to gaming as a male-dominated space. And so someone coming in and saying, hey, or specifically, I should say, a woman coming in and saying, hey, I'm a gamer, and I think stuff is kind of messed up here, right? That these representations aren't really great, so let's have a conversation. Let's try to change things and make it better for everyone who games. Um, and they didn't like that. They didn't like that at all. My story, coupled with many other women's stories of being harassed, for example, really propelled harassment into the main stage, right? It was covered by major outlets. Um, it was covered by The New Yorker. It was on the front page of The New York Times. Like, these are reputable outlets talking about, like, how online harassment is a problem. Um, and so there is a larger conversation, and I don't think that the social media sites would have ever reached out to us to improve their platforms if that hadn't happened, if there wasn't this critical mass around it. It's never been about video games, she says. It's always about social justice. It's always been using feminism to talk about these things. This was never about video games. This was always about Anita pushing her ideological agenda. Christina Hoff Sommers sums up Anita's ideology. What's not happening, what's not happening in, in feminism, the current incarnation on the campus is not about with females being powerful, it's about victimology. In the typical women's studies course, or if you looked at the website of the Ms. Foundation or, or the National Organization for Women, it's about women as victims and men as predators and how we're preyed upon by the capitalist, patriarchal, oppressive society. Yeah. Sort of the vagina monologue. Exactly. You know, philosophy. That vagina monologue, which is, which is you know, a, a little bit. Women are from Venus, men are from hell. Okay, that's the philosophy. <laughs> Anita's ideology is based on victimhood feminism. She believes that we live in a patriarchal society in which women are oppressed simply for being born women and the only way to fight this is to subscribe to her feminist ideology. Um, I think that we live in patriarchy and so that these that the media reflects the society we live in, but then the media also perpetuates the stereotypes to maintain like it works to maintain a lot of it and sometimes exacerbate them like it, it depends on the particular issue but I think that there's like you know it's interesting so when I was seeing Gina Davis talk she was saying like you know it's not like you know Hollywood the writers in Hollywood are these you know malicious people that are sitting around being like oh how can we write terrible female characters you know like but you know they kind of are so here here's I, I was on so they are and they aren't, right, is what I'm trying to get at. Is that, like, there is a lot of unintentional, like, we live in patriarchy, so we don't think about the female characters, and it just, this is what comes, like, it's like, it's like there's an algorithm for these horrible stories, and that they come out of a computer, that people don't actually write them, right? Like, sometimes I feel like that, because they're so repetitive. Well, you know, Hollywood is a reflection of our society, really, in that, you know, the people who work in Hollywood are still, you know, born and raised in the same sort of climate that we are, or at least... It, you know, if we're speaking about uh, American culture. Um, 
and that is a culture that is deeply patriarchal. And so we have a, uh, we live in a society that still undervalues women, that is still oppressive to women. And so Hollywood reflects that, and the people who write the stories reflect that, and and the ways that they get produced, and the the um, the choices that are made as to who gets to star in the films, what films are even made, and who gets cast in those films are all a reflection of. Um, of, of our society and the way that, you know, women's role in our society is presented. The victimhood harassment narrative was always the real focus of Anita's Kickstarter. Given all the backlash, Anita said, the project is now going to evolve to include a much larger component about online harassment and treatment of female gamers in video game culture because what's happening to me is not an isolated incident. What we can share is that the issue of harassment both in the gaming community and on the internet in general has, unfortunately, become intertwined with this Kickstarter campaign, so we're definitely going to include a substantial additional component to this project that will directly address the epidemic of misogynist racist and homophobic online harassment. Initially My Tropes vs. Women in Video Games project aimed to examine the patterns of stereotypical representations of women in video games, but given the intensity of the hate I've been subjected to for simply announcing the video series. The project will now be expanded to include a component about the epidemic problem of harassment in gaming spaces. Additionally, the topic of online harassment has become a major component of this project so I'm also committing time to sharing my story by giving talks, doing dozens of media interviews and communicating with a handful of game studios and social media companies on the subject. There have been many inspirational women speaking out about online and gaming harassment issues for a long time and my hope has been that I can use my personal story to contribute to this important and critical conversation. We know for a fact that Anita wanted to do a project about harassment before she announced her Kickstarter. Yeah, like 4chan has found me. Like they subscribe to my videos so that they can attack me. To like actual threats of, of sexual violence and threats of um, death even. One, so one of the ways that I deal with this, um, one, I'm going to do a research study about harassment that women face on YouTube as a way to funnel my anger and frustration at this. After Kickstarter, she acts like she wanted to talk about harassment as a result of her Kickstarter and not before. It's never been about video games, she says. It's always about social justice. It's always been using feminism to talk about these things. To Anita the video game industry and its large male audience is nothing more than a tool for her to push her victimhood ideology. Like all extreme ideologues she uses lies and dishonesty to create problems that don't exist so she can use the fear and anger that is generated to further her ideological goals. She tricked people into giving her money under the lie that she was being harassed by gamers knowing full will that it was 4chan trolls. This lie that gamers hate women who criticize video games persists to this day and has been reinforced by the straw boogeyman narrative of Gamergate. This is the number one reason why Anita Sarkeesian is a con artist. Well, as someone who wrote a book called The Confidence Game, we fall for it every time, what did you think when you saw Donald Trump <laughs> standing there in front of a table full of his products? To me, that screamed, con there a picture, of it screamed confidence man. You know, I saw him and I thought, I'm a psychic. Right. Because, <laughs> because I clearly predicted that this was going to happen. I mean, the moment that they analyzed what his products actually were, they found out that they weren't his products. Not his products. Um, right. He was blatantly lying. And the hallmark of a psycho of a, well, of a psychopath. <laughs> See? I've been playing video games since I was about five years old. This is a photo of me at age 10 playing uh, Super Mario World on the Super Nintendo. So I've been playing games for quite a while. And uh, in addition to being a lot of fun to play, games have lots of positive benefits as well. So again, I've been playing games for a while. How do you feel about video games? I still love them. Um, I, you know, I think games are really where we're going. Video games are so interesting and engaging and interactive. I, I'm a gamer and I enjoy games. I, I love games. I'm, I'm a, a, f a fan of games. A soundtrack of one song, except I'm doing video games. So it's not exactly a fandom. I'm not a fan of video games. I actually had to learn a lot about video games in the process of making this. To me, the song is positive just because I've only contextualized it in a way to critique male domination in our media. 
And also, video games, like, I would love to play video games, but I don't want to go around shooting people and ripping off their heads, and it's just gross, so, hence this is my react response to that. Hey, there you go, Freudian slip. The hallmark of a psychopath, but also the hallmark of a con artist, is someone who deceives you for their own ends. So they're trying to convince you to support them, to vote for them, in this particular case, um, and they're doing it by, dis by tactics that aren't actually... The two biggest challenges I face are funding and harassment. I don't receive funding to make feminist frequency videos and while I want to create videos more often they are extremely time consuming to research and produce and I still have to pay rent each month so balancing paid work and feminist frequency has been a challenge. Yeah, like 4chan has found me. Like they subscribe to my videos so that they can attack me. To like actual threats of, of sexual violence and threats of um, death even. One, so one of the ways that I deal with this, um, one, I'm going to do a research study about harassment that women face on YouTube as a way to funnel my anger and frustration at this. On a day-to-day -day basis, I'm, I moderate all of my comments. So when you comment on my, when any of my worlds online, um, I have to read it before it gets approved. So I don't approve any of those um, so that the people coming to my page don't have to deal with it. So tell us what happened when you announced on YouTube that you were going to launch this project. <laughs> well, um, I put the video up and um, I, I intentionally moderate all of my comments and all of my feminist frequency spaces. And this time I thought maybe I would just let them go and see what happens. Um, so I announced uh, my intentions to create a video series examining the way women are portrayed in video games. And I was attacked by a section of male gamers. And I think part of uh, the attack was was based on their attempt to preserve the status quo of gaming as a male-dominated space and all of the privileges and entitlements that come with an unquestioned boys club. Additionally, the topic of online harassment has become a major component of this project so I'm also committing time to sharing my story by giving talks, doing dozens of media interviews and communicating with a handful of game studios and social media companies on the subject. There have been many inspirational women speaking out about online and gaming harassment issues for a long time and my hope has been that I can use my personal story to contribute to this important and critical conversation. It's never been about video games, she says. It's always about social justice. It's always been using feminism to talk about these things. This, I mean, am I reading too much into this, but standing there in front of a, a table full of steaks. Now, I don't eat steak, <laughs> but like most people love steak. I thought this was like subliminal advertising kind of stuff, like people looking at that and going, Trump, steak. <laughs> if I vote Trump, I'll eat steak. <laughs> I mean, they look juicy, you know, steaks yeah? look good. People yeah? are like, hmm. And, you know what, think of the voters he's trying to appeal to. Right. So he's actually going for that people common... People who would like to eat steak but can't who, afford it. That's people who right. want to eat steak. Right. Let them eat steak. <laughs> what? Yeah. It's true. <laughs> and, and I think that we see him trying to get the popular vote. It's the same appeal that he makes all the time, that he is honest, he's a man of the people. He's telling everyone exactly what they want to hear. And he doesn't actually say anything. So that's, that's what confidence artists do. So he's, so he's a, he's a con man, but he is a good one. He's a very good con right. man. That's why they're called con artists. Right. <laughs> the art of the deal, right. And I, you make the point that, you know, everyone is saying that uh, Donald Trump has hijacked the party, but a con man doesn't take anything from a person. No. You give it to him Absolutely. willingly. Absolutely, yes. We give them our confidence. Right. The origin of the term confidence game was a man who stole watches, but he never actually stole them. He went up to people on the streets and said, have you confidence in me to lend me your watch until tomorrow? Oh. And people gave them his watch because wow. they gave them they gave him their confidence. And that's exactly what Trump is doing to the party. He isn't asking anyone for anything. People sure. are willingly giving their trust and their confidence. The more I read about this Trump University, <laughs> the more it sounds like Scientology. It does. <laughs> people, it, it is. People paying 
great sums of money to find out a secret that isn't really a secret. And people being coerced yeah. to right. keep giving good ratings. Yeah. We have Scientology where you also have some of the same coercive tactics where people basically get brainwashed into, into saying that Scientology is wonderful. Trump's university's 98% approval ratings. I mean, when we read is about- Is that true? They really do have that high approval rating? <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> Every single person stands behind that rating. So they have people watching them and calling them. We read stories of people who say that they've been called every single day to change their rating, and finally they say, "Fine, I'm going. I'll change my oh, rating to to 100 percent." Now you called him a psychopath. What, first I of all, did. what is a psycho? We all throw that term around. I, I'd be hard pressed to define it right now. What is a psychopath? <laughs> well, there's actually a checklist. Here's psychopathy check. Uh, checklist well, I know you have a, a checklist for nar narcissistic I have personality. I have, some, I have lots of checklists. Is that a different than a psychopath? <laughs> narcissistic um, person? It is, but they actually, both both overlap. of those traits, yeah, there's a lot of overlap there. Because here are some of your narcissistic personality <laughs> disorder. Exaggerated sense of self-importance. I don't see that in Donald Trump. No, not at all. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> um, for me, the big picture has always been cultural change and, and how culture was just a, a, a vehicle and a medium to which cultural change can happen or can be influenced by. Um, so it's not actually about video games, but it's about <laughs> video games, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, the other piece of it for me is that like, when I started talking about, game, about games, the industry all of a sudden was, was listening. <laughs> I say that again, everyone's going to say, well, you know, whatever, if anyone was at E3 recently. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, there has been a huge amplification in the conversations around gender representations in gaming in general, both in the games press, both in the game industry. I get invited to speak at game studios, so seeing studios and, um, and publishers slowly kind of try to figure this thing out and actually make the change that makes the cultural change, right, um, is what I find really important and, and powerful. So having industry that I'm critiquing actually listening, sort of, <laughs> this all comes with big aspects, right, um, I think is, is really cool, and it's not yeah. something I ever, ever expected when I started, but now, I in the back of my mind, whenever I make videos, I'm like, oh, what do developers need to hear to understand how to move forward? When I say X, Y, and Z is problematic, what do they need to hear to be like, oh, so let's not do this in our game, and let's do this instead? Um, and that's something that I'm really excited about and interested in. Have you had uh, conversations with developers where they tell you that they've watched something yes. and learned from it? Absolutely. I've had a lot of a lot of developers come up to me and say, "Hey, we changed our game because of the stuff we learned from your videos." <laughs> Need for excessive admiration again coming up empty. <laughs> Now they bring you my response to a tweet from Anita Sarkeesian. It basically says that each time an angry YouTuber with over 250,000 fans decides to slander and strawman her, the harassment increases exponentially. But my response really to this is, so people who critique you or don't agree with you, that's harassment. Really, that's harassment, Anita. Are you that thin-skinned? Do you have a backbone? No, no, no. You are a professional victim, sorry. A media critic. Self-proclaimed. No, but... That's harassment, really. Somebody's saying, I don't agree with you. That's harassment. And then... What, are you saying that their fans harass you? So if they agree with the people who are critiquing you and they might mention your name or mention you indirectly, that's harassment. If so, I've done it to you on bloody many occasions. Sense of entitlement? Where are you getting this shit from? <laughs> How Anita wants video games to change. Eight things deaths can do to make games less chic for women. Uh, lacking empathy? Ha, huh, come on. Manhood, not guns or mental illness should be central in Newtown shooting must read 2012 article. Not a coincidence it's always men and boys committing mass shootings. 
the pattern is connected to ideas of toxic masculinity in our culture. Mass shootings are one of tragic consequence of a culture that perpetuates toxic ideas of masculinity. This is how patriarchy can harm men too. Uh, believing others to be envious of him. <laughs> Arrogant, haughty, contemptuous behavior or attitudes. Dying Light has a damsel in distress storyline. Dear game developers, it's 2015 aren't you embarrassed by this yet? This level of extreme violence shouldn't be considered normal. It's not an excuse to say it's expected because doom. That's the problem. If the games industry truly wants to mature it's going to have to focus much more on creative and humanizing interactions. So, yeah, uh, yeah it sounds like he might be on the edge of that. It, it, I, I don't think so, I don't think so, I don't think it applies. But <laughs> a lot of these actually overlap with, um, with psychopathy, like the lack of empathy, like the arrogance and putting right. down of other people. You don't, so he, he does this very funny thing where to his voters he says really wonderful things to their face and then behind their back he says terrible things things about the same groups, because he had, makes the same statement, but opposite ways, depending on who he's talking to. So I've been playing games for quite a while. And uh, in addition to being a lot of fun to play, games have lots of positive benefits as well. So again, I've been playing games for a while. A soundtrack of one song, except I'm doing video games. So it's not exactly a fandom. I'm not a fan of video games. I actually had to learn a lot about video games in the process of making this. How do you feel about video games? I still love them. Um, I, you know, I think games are really where we're going. And also, video games, like, I would love to play video games, but I don't want to go around shooting people and ripping off their heads, and it's just gross. So, hence, this is my react response to that. Video games are so interesting and engaging and interactive. I, I'm a gamer, and I enjoy games. I, I love games. I'm, I'm a, a, f a fan of games. And games are really bad to women. They just represent women really poorly uh, across genres, across platforms, across um, like indies and triple A's. And now that's not to say that there aren't games that are great and have great representations, but it's pretty awful. It is no secret that the video game industry boasts some of the most sexually objectified, stereotyped, and downright oppressive portrayals of women in any medium. And so you end up seeing these two sides of him where the truth is a really fungible thing. Um, and there's no such thing as absolute truth. The truth is just what's true in the moment to him. Well, and yes. that's both a narcissist and a psychopath. And those are two of the dark triad of traits. The third is Machiavellianism. Uh, yes. Okay. <laughs> and, 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 and... <laughs>